check my testing. Okay, today I am recording myself. Okay. Check my test. <coughs> Wait now. Uh, set up. Good morning everyone. Okay. Yeah. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we ask that you forgive us from our sins. Be merciful to us, Lord. Please give us wisdom and understanding as we study your word so that it can change us and protect us from sin. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. <coughs> We have many experiments <laughs> with audiovisual. We are trying to maximize the the no, the reach of the truth. Our lesson this morning is very nice, po. <clears throat> Welcome everyone. So this is the outline of our lesson. Our, it is about covetousness, yeah, covetousness. So uh, it is the origin of sin. That is the problem of Satan, and. There is a story here. All of these stories about covetousness in the Bible are for our warnings. Yeah? So this is Achan, and Judas also has problem had problem with covetousness. And how can we overcome covetousness according to the Bible? <clears throat> and other deeper insights by Ellen White in the Friday. Okay, let's go. We have only almost 300 slides, so I <clears throat> sorry. So please listen quickly, <laughs> okay? <clears throat> okay. Beware of covetousness. And our memory text is, Take heed and beware of covetousness, for one's life does not consist of the abundance of things that we possess. Okay? As long as we have clothes and food. So, beware. <clears throat> it is not about how many cameras, <laughs> how many cell phones, cars, it is about, yeah, okay, so, life. you shall not covet your neighbor's house. This is the 10th commandment, yeah? You see the 10 commandments there? That is the 10th commandment. Or your wife, neighbor's wife, servant, ox, the car, or anything that is thy neighbor's. <coughs> Excuse me. First Corinthians 6, 9, it says that the kingdom of heaven is not for fornicators, idolaters, adulterers, <coughs> homosexuals, sodomites, thieves, but and covetous people. <coughs> Everything here you can see, except covetousness. Yeah? It's very hard to de detect. <coughs> Ex uh, refi revilers, extortioners. So it is, covetousness is a deadly sin. Okay, let's see what happened to Lucifer. Lucifer was fallen from heaven, son of the morning, cut down to the ground, weakened, who weakened the nations. Why? Because he said, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt, yeah? Exalt, it, it, this is pride. I, 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 I will exalt above the stars of God. I will sit on the mount of the congregation. I will ascend the height. I will be. Oh, I, I, I. You try to <clears throat> record all your thoughts. How many I? That, to measure yourself. So, according to Ellen White, it is love and happiness. It depends. Love and happiness in heaven depends on perfect obedience, accord to the righteousness. Everybody wants to serve. Yeah? Serve. It's not about se serving self. Serving God with love because, why? Because we appreciate God. So in heaven, when they appreciate God's character, they want to serve God. Yeah, that is 
God does not take pleasure in force, obedience pala. It is God grants freedom in will to do voluntary service. Because we appreciate God, they appreciate God. Okay. <clears throat> so long as there is loyalty to God, there is joy in heaven. And they are fulfilling the purpose why they were created. They want to reflect God's glory and praise God and love of God and love for one another. Yeah, unselfish thing. Okay. So no problem in heaven. <clears throat> but Satan, Lucifer, perverted the will, yeah? the freedom of will, <clears throat> the freedom of choice. And sin originated from Lucifer. Okay. <clears throat> so what happened? He was created perfect until iniquity was found in him. Ezekiel 28, 12. Okay. Little by little, Lucifer became indulged in self. Huh? I think he wants to take to take selfie. <laughs> little by little. <clears throat> Desire self-exaltation. Thine heart with filth. So little by little palayan. Huh? Thine heart was filled with uh, lifted up because of thy beauty. Hmm. Be careful. If you think you are beautiful, ah, be careful. <laughs> Don't, your heart should not be lifted up. If you are, if you think you are a wise, be careful not to corrupt thy brightness. If you are intelligent, careful. If you are beautiful or handsome, careful also. <clears throat> Do not exalt yourself. We should give glory to God, not glory to ourselves, yeah? Though all his glory was from all of Lucifer's glory, was from God, but he thought it was his. That is the problem. He was not content with his position and he wanted homage. He wanted people to worship him, Nako, uh, and other angels to worship him. <clears throat> so, <laughs> he wanted the angels to obey him instead of God, to secure loyalty to himself, to vetting the glory which was in the of God. So he wanted God, everybody was worshiping God, he wanted attention to himself. He wanted power that was only for Jesus Christ. His idea was he served you, I want you to serve me. Serve himself. <clears throat> so all the other angels, please Lucifer, change your mind. But the more they ask him, No. Please, God is good, great justice of the Creator. They try to see the niceness of God's law, but He has another idea. He wants to destroy. They, they wanted to show Him that if He doesn't align, it will be for His destruction. Problem is, the more they told Him, the more He wanted to resist. He arose a spirit of resistance and he allowed his jealousy of Christ to prevail. Okay, so because of jealousy, <clears throat> he became Satan. Now he wants to prove that God is wrong. <laughs> God is wrong, imagine. He wants to prove that God is not love, God is wrong, God is unfair. Yeah. So that is the problem with because of his intelligence, bewildering sophistry, he wants to justify his uh, position, his idea. Yeah, this is very terrible. And the root is uh, covetousness. He wants to covet what is not his. <clears throat> it says, in okay, this is just a repetition. Those people who are covetous will not inherit the kingdom of God. Therefore, we should put to death all of these things. Yeah. This is our, these things are in us. We have to put to death all of these things that are with us, including fornication. <clears throat> Do you know what fornication is? <clears throat> Sex outside of marriage. <clears throat> Uncleanness, passion, evil, 
even beside covetousness, idolatry. Okay. <coughs> Why? <coughs> Be careful of exchanging truth for lies and worshiping the Creator. Okay, let's worship only God, the Creator. Not, we will not worship uh, people, yeah? We don't worship leaders, we don't worship the church, we don't worship anything here. We only worship God, the Creator. Okay, Amen. David and Bathsheba, he coveted somebody else's wife, yeah? Okay, be careful about the uh, coveting wife. <clears throat> so the solution is contentment. Okay, contentment is great gain because when we die, we cannot bring our money. Okay, now let's look at the story of <clears throat> So I just want to summarize. Jericho fell down. God said all of the things are, are to, for the temple because it is not the Israelites who destroyed the wall. It is God who destroyed the wall. So everything, all the spoil is not for the Israelites. It is for God's work. But Achan, you know what Achan saw? He saw nice clothes. Imagine in the ruins of Jericho, Achan saw nice clothes, Babylonian clothes and some pieces of silver and a wedge of gold and he hid it under his tent and they went to go to ai and they were defeated for the first time they went to battle the enemy chased them away and god sent said, told them there is an accursed thing in the camp so they drew lots and then the lot fell on achan and achan said yes and then joshua said are you are you the one did you do anything bad and just Achan said, yes, there is a very nice clothes in under my tent. Imagine, you are already being judged and you still think the clothes is nice. So that is, I just summarized what, what is in the slide to be, so that it will be fast. So that is in Joshua chapter 7. Yeah? The word that, just, that Achan said, I like the clothes, is the same word. That is used here. He they really like he really liked the clothes. This is the problem with Ethan. He liked the clothes so much that he he coveted the clothes and the silver. Yeah? The first thing, and it brought trouble not only to him to the whole nation, to the whole Israelites. Silver and gold, okay, they were consecrated to the Lord. So therefore. The price is to be cut off. Okay, now let's look at the heart of Judas. <clears throat> okay, Mary gave a broke a perfume on, on Jesus' feet and washed it with a uh, wipe with his with her hair. And then Judas said, "That is a no, sayang. It is waste of money." You know why? He said it is, should be given to the poor. <clears throat> that money that was called, that was uh, used for the perfume. <laughs> but the Bible says he said that not because he is concerned with the poor. It is because he is the treasurer, and when the money is put there, he is taking and spending to his own. He is thinking, I am working for God. I should take some. So that is the problem of Judas. <clears throat> so, because Judas developed this love for money, he wants to sell Jesus. Anyway, Jesus can escape. So let's sell Jesus for 30 pesos of silver. But Jesus did not escape, so he was very disappointed. 30 pesos of silver and he betrayed Jesus. So according to Ellen White, it is all of these things are warning. To us, yeah. <clears throat> okay, Judas had the opportunity to reflect. Imagine after getting 30 pieces of silver, I'm going to sell Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. He had the opportunity to reflect and to repent 
what he promised the, the, the priests, but he did not change his mind. Very sad, he did not change his mind. <clears throat> he sold Jesus Christ for ignominy. Ignominy means public disgrace. For 30 pieces of silver, he let Jesus become a public disgrace and to death. So, the background of Judas, according to Ellen White, he had a strong love for money. And it became avarice. Avarice means extreme greed. Okay. It became the motive of his life. The love of money became more than the love of Christ. Yeah? And he became a slave to the vice of the love of money. And gave himself to Satan. So, let's see. Judas was supposed to do the work of the evangelist, but he loved money so much. That was his problem. Judas did not come to the point. He had to surrender his love of money. But he did not give up his worldly ambition and his love for money. He is a minister of Christ, but this is another problem we have. We are too smart. He said, I think, I think, I think. <laughs> he could not, he felt that he could retain his own judgment and opinions. There is the Bible, there is the spirit, the spirit of prophecy. But I think yeah, this is very dangerous. Yeah. Dangerous. When we think we are better than God's word and the prophets. Therefore, he tried to criticize and accuse. So Judas was respectable, highly regarded, and he had high opinion, and he had great influence. The problem is, he has a high opinion of himself. <laughs> you know what, I think, I thought I was good. And then I realized I was uh, at the bottom. Okay. He was high opinion of his qualifications. He thought everybody was, uh, they don't know what they are doing. And he thought and take advantage. Okay. The work of God will never prosper when we are like Judas. When we think that the people don't know what they are doing. Everybody has a talent and everybody has something to do in God's work. Yeah? <clears throat> and nobody knows everything. Diba? When, when I do media ministry seminar, I'm there to ask questions. Because there are so many people knows I'm the one who learns. <clears throat> so Peter has problem. John has problem. Everybody has problem. He thought everybody has problem. Matthew has problem. And he thought, I am the only one who knows what to do. He flattered himself. Oh, <clears throat> he thinks he's the only one capable according to his own estimation. That is the problem. He became blind. He cannot see his problem. Blinded by his own weaknesses. <clears throat> so, Judas' work as the treasurer was to provide the needs and to give necessity for the poor. But instead, he is getting for himself. So, Jesus told him, what you do? <laughs> you do quickly. So the disciples thought that he was being told to give money to the poor. But it means something else. <clears throat> Yan, itong maganda. This is the solution. When we minister to others, Jesus ministering to others should have developed an unselfish spirit. So the solution to our covetousness is to help others. Yeah? We should help others. <clears throat> Covetous. So the little money that was coming to the treasury, it was temptation to him. Ah, that's why I avoid money. <laughs> Run away from money. Oh, I'm not sure if that's correct. But that was the problem of Judas. He paid himself from the treasury. Yeah? Very, very complicated. But in God's sight, he was a thief. Okay. Now let's look at another story in Acts 4 to 5, Ananias. Ananias was in, uh, Sapphira and Ananias were in a revival. And in a revival they were so emotional and they loved God. They saw the Holy Spirit was poured to them. 
they promised to sell their land and to donate the, the, the money to the work. But they changed their mind. When they sold the land, they got money, they changed their mind, and they kept most of the money, and they gave only a little money to Peter. They said, those who give money to Peter, they are popular. So we want to be popular, but we don't want to give the money. But the problem is they promised God to give the money, all of them. So that was the problem of uh, Ananias and Sapphira, the couple, who promised to sell their land and to give money, but they tried to keep most of the money. When they gave to Peter the money, he fell down. Peter said, you did not lie to men, to us, but you lied to God. He died. When the wife came, <clears throat> did you not sell for this amount? Peter said. Peter knows the amount. Peter is full of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> yes. Okay. Your husband died three hours ago. You will die also. And she died. That is the warning for everybody who is telling God promises but not fulfilling. <clears throat> we have to <clears throat> fulfill the promise. Okay. <clears throat> so this is the revival. <clears throat> they were selling their house and lands <clears throat> and bringing to the apostles' feet and they were distributing. But they sold and kept back the proceeds. Brought a certain part and Peter said, you lied. You have not lied to God, not to men, but you have lied. So they fell and he died. And then the wife came and they, he was died. Okay. So they they were they had deep conviction. So this was the revival. They had a deep conviction and they made a pledge to give the money and the proceeds that was from the sale of the property. But they changed their mind. This is the problem. They yield to their feelings. You know what? They regretted their promise. If we made a promise to God, we should not regret. Yeah? We should take opportunity to fulfill the promise. Why? When they made the promise, they want to help the church, do large things for the church. They decided not to fulfill their pledge. I was wondering when I read Acts 4 and 5, why do donors die? Then I realized this, I read Ellen White's writings, it says they did not fulfill their pledge. Selfish, grudge, solemnly dedicated to God, and they deliberately decided to sell and pretend to give all. They pretended to give all, but they kept the large share for themselves. Yeah, so They want to be popular and still get the money. And that is called fraud. You are cheating God. They lied to the Holy Spirit and their judgment was swift and terrible. Yeah, so sad. Peter said, Thou hast not lied to men, but unto God. Okay. It was their choice. They decided. So, my friends, that was necessary when the church was growing fast. At that time, it was necessary to warn against this terrible sin of covetousness. Yeah? Worshipping mammon, men cannot deceive God. We cannot cheat God. God is God knows everything. So this is the warning, not only to that church, also to this church, this end time church. We should not pretend, avoid pretense and hypocrisy in robbing God. So God hates covetousness. Okay. Now, how to overcome covetousness? Don't worry, all temptations can be overcome according to 
1 Corinthians 10.13. No temptation cannot be overcome. God not allow you to be tempted beyond what we are able. So God will not put so much money in front of us that we cannot say no. Yeah? God knows. That God will not tempt us beyond what we are able. Okay. But will give us an escape. So you pray to God always, Lord, help me escape. Find the escape for my temptation. You know what? <clears throat> I will tell you a secret. Sometimes God gives me dream in the, that there will be a, this kind of temptation the next day. And when the next day comes, then I see that temptation. Then I realize God told me in dream just last night and it looks the same. Yeah? So you, we can only succeed from God's power. God will give us escape. Ano pa dyan? Decide that you will serve God. For As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Okay. There is a prayer in the Lord's Prayer, Matthew 6. He does not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Who can deliver us from evil, from evil and from temptation? God, only God. Okay. Okay. What else? The Bible helps us get away from temptation. For your word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin. Okay, when we read the Bible, you know why when you log into IOLIS there is Bible verse? <laughs> Everywhere, yeah? Every three hours it shows up, yeah? So that it will help us not sin. What else? Seek the Lord. When we call on God, He will answer. Have you tried? You pray that God will show Himself to you. Call upon Him while He is near. So, but we have to do something. We have to delete all our bad video <laughs> in the cell phone. <laughs> Unsubscribe to those bad channel in YouTube. Unfriend some people who are saying only bad things in uh, <laughs> black. We can forsake His way. The unrighteous thoughts, we have to delete our the unrighteous thoughts. Okay. And he will pardon. This is the nice thing. God will pardon. Okay, now let's go to Friday. We are Friday now. This is just deeper into some things. And we have 10 minutes. Okay. I will just read the one that I highlighted. <clears throat> okay, this was the story of Achan. The Israelites had victory over Jericho and they felt self confident for AI. They did not know there was a curse in the camp. Yeah? They felt secure. They failed to recognize that it was God who gave them the victory and the success. They even made plans. Joshua, he made a mistake. He made plans for going to AI without consulting God in their own strength. And they said, ah, you are all Canaanites, we can all beat you. So that is a problem. Uh, uh, yeah. They rushed without assurance that God would be with them. And they were chased away because of God's displeasure. Yeah. And then they tried to look for Achan. <clears throat> Joshua was crying in the temple in sackcloth. And then God said, why are you crying? You get up and remove the curse from your camp. There is a curse. That's why you cannot succeed. Get up. There is a curse. I have commanded, do not keep anything, but somebody kept something. There is a secret sin. We have to put away the secret sin. And except you destroy the curse, there will be no blessing. So God commanded to execute judgment and to help somebody, the transgressor, accountable. So, you know what God said? There is a sin, but he did not tell who. And everybody is repenting, yeah? Searching the heart of humiliation. Yeah? And this is what Achan said. He was already being judged, but he still thinks that the clothes are nice. A goodly Babylonish garment. Imagine, 
you were you you caused 39 people to die and the whole nation to be a laughing stock of all the Canaanites and you are still thinking of the good Babylonist garment yeah and the silver and the gold and I coveted them and took them so he troubled them. he troubled so Joshua said why did you trouble us it is a big trouble covetousness is our problem a problem of the church a problem of God's people so they stoned because it concerned the whole nation they all had representatives of throwing stones at Achan because it is defiance of the most direct warnings imagine <clears throat> they saw Jericho fell down they crossed the river they heard they heard God's God's voice they saw the fire they saw the Ten Commandments and then God said you all the and then he disobeyed most direct command they saw circumcision Passover appearance overthrow destruction <clears throat> okay all the victories are of God's victory yeah okay I already told this okay so covetousness is a deadly sin punishment terrible results it is gradual development greed of gain it has become a habit so they can develop little by little gradually and we cannot understand now that we are deceived yeah that's what happens with, with uh, we are serving be careful of serving mammon. <clears throat> Beware of covetousness. So this, all of these stories, my friends, are for our warning. Yeah? Because this deadly sin, this content, <laughs> the rich, you know, the poor, they hate the rich. This is also covetousness. As poor people, when we see rich people, we are not happy. How come? This is also covetousness. The poor also, the rich, when they oppress the poor, they don't give salary properly, they, it is also to get this. Yeah. Both sides have temptation. Okay. So, how to escape? Do not neglect charity, and tithes, and offerings. <clears throat> Unlawful gains are also to get this. Illegal. Illegal uh, gain is also to get this. And that is... Okay, two minutes. We, when we don't give to the suffering and the poor, that is Kubetus. Meron dito Kubetus Professor. Meaning you are Chris, uh, you are calling yourself a Christian, but you are not behaving properly. Okay. In the last days, there will be men, lovers of themselves, lovers of pleasure, lovers of money. Yeah? So that is disobedient to me. When we die, we cannot bring anything. So we are actually just dust. Don't even, as long as we have clothing and food, no, we should be content according to this verse. Those who desire riches and temptation, there is dangerous perdition. The love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Some have strayed because of greediness and pierced themselves with many sorrows. So that is the whole <coughs> <Good> lesson. <coughs> Everything that is in the lesson, you read, you read, you read. I read. We read. Yeah? That is Jesus' uh, way of teaching Sabbath school. He came to the temple and he read. Any questions? We have one more minute. Very nice, yeah? Very, uh, very scary, scary stories. Okay, if there's no more question, I will just pray so that we can end. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for the warnings in the Bible and the spirit of prophecy for the added light. We ask only that you help us to be faithful, not covetous. Lord, do everything that is necessary for us not to be like Achan, Judas, Ananias, and Sapphira. Thank you for saving us from all our sins. 
and for opening us a way to escape. Thank you for, we totally depend on you. We cannot overcome without you, Lord. We totally depend on you. Thank you for hearing our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Stop recording.